Logical sort circuiting in MATLAB is a creative way to skip checks in branching statements or loops for that matter. Oftentimes in MATLAB we write code that runs only if a condition evaluates to be true. So far we've seen three different programming structures that allow us to do that all starting with the if keyword. So we have simple if statements, we have if else statements, and then just recently we learned about if else if else statements. Each situation when we come to a condition that we want to test, we call that a logical scalar, a one by one array that evaluates as either logical false, which is zero, or logical true, which is one. When those evaluate as true, we run into one code block. If not, we do something else, et cetera, et cetera. Oftentimes when defining these logical scalars, these conditions, we use either the or or the and logical operation. One of the things that the coders over at MATLAB represent, uh, recognized early was that for certain conditions, there's no need to check the truth values of both P and Q. Specifically, let's assume that we're using an, a simple if statement and we're testing two conditions, P and Q, and we wanna run this uh, body of code over here, assuming that one or both of those are true. If the first argument P evaluates as true, the entire statement will be true no matter what. There's no need to check the second condition, but the single pipe, that's kind of a, a individual or statement, doesn't allow for that to happen. So if we use that single pipe in MATLAB, MATLAB is gonna check the truth value of both of those statements no matter what. The dual of that statement is true for the single and or the ampersand, if I'm checking a logical statement and the first condition is false, I know immediately that the entire AND statement is false. But if I use that single AND ampersand, MATLAB is going to check both conditions independent of what's happening over here in P. Well, the folks of MATLAB thought that that's kind of silly and they introduced additional functionality on top for logical checks, and these are what we call short circuit operators, logical operators, or logical operations with short circuiting. This is the double AND sign and also the double pipe sign or the double vertical bar sign. So if we write expression one AND AND expression two, this is a short circuited logical AND where if the first condition evaluates as false, the entire thing will evaluate as false without checking the second condition. Similarly with uh, short-circuited OR, we have the double pipe. If the first condition evaluates as true, the entire thing will evaluate as true without actually checking the second condition. I'm gonna go ahead and let you all re run through the examples here. There's a nice set of examples with any and all. Um, the documentation is logical operators uh, colon short circuit and and or there's a lot of good documentation here the point of this though is that we're going to use that double ampersand and double pipe sign anytime we write if else statements in fact we could actually do this now let's go ahead and start a new script we're going to call this um, uh, short circuit logicals example um, and then we'll save in this case we'll go ahead and create a matrix a and let's go ahead and use the identity function, which creates that identity matrix. And we'll say this is a 10 by one. Remember that if we run that code, it produces the first column of the 10 by 10 identity matrix. That's from a previous video. Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're gonna run a, a few different tests to figure out what the size of this is. This relates to a previous example that we've done. Let's run a, an if statement. So is this empty? Is empty A? Um, so this basically says if a is empty, we're gonna print out uh, your input variable is empty. Boo, sadness. Uh, should we do a, the coding equivalent of an emoji? It's downward face, all right? And then we'll go ahead and return in that situation. So we'll return control back to the script file that called it. Um, so we've checked to see if it's empty. Uh, let's go ahead and write that. So this is a quick check to see if input variable, we're getting ready to code function, so we'll call this an input variable is empty. So if we pass this check, we immediately know that um, the thing is not empty, right? So it, it, it's at least, it, one, at least both of those are bigger than zero. 
So the next thing that we're going to do, um, let's go ahead and do the size now, just like we did before. MA is the number of rows of A, NA is the number of columns of A, and this is going to be size of A. Uh, for you uh, viewers at home, I would ask, could you uh, find a different way to test if this was empty? Remember an empty array, so if I say B, and if I check the size of B, empty arrays just have one of the sizes, at least one of the sizes equal to zero. And that's exactly what we see here, zero, zero. So is there another way to test if, if A is empty without calling the isEmpty function, specifically using the dimensions here? I'll leave that to you to figure out. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is look at conditions and we're gonna talk about the logical sort circuiting. So let's go ahead and check if, else if, else end. Let's create a set of conditions that check if x is a scalar, a non-scalar vector, or a non-vector matrix. So here we go. If ma equals 1 and na equals 1, then we have a vector. So uh, our input a is a scalar, I'm sorry. Notice that MATLAB is getting um, upset with me. So this is kind of one of the interesting things. See how that's highlighted in orange? That may, means MATLAB has a suggestion to improve my code. When I run this, look at this. When both arguments are numerical scalars, consider using replacing AND with double AND for performance. So remember, this is short circuiting. If I use this and the first one is false, we already know that the entire statement is false, but MATLAB will actually have to check each of those individually. The moment I drop that double ampersand or the logical short circuited and, that means that if this first one evaluates as false, MATLAB will automatically uh, conclude that the entire condition is false and not check the second one. So this is an example of where that kind of performance comes up and MATLAB actually highlights that. So in the next one, let's go ahead and check if MA is equal to one and NA is not equal to one, then we say that we have a row vector. A is a row vector. Okay, um, let's go ahead and keep going here. We'll reuse the code that we just did there. If um, MA is not equal to one, but NA is equal to one. If the number of columns is the number of rows is not one, but the number of columns is one, we know that we have a column vector. And finally, we might say that the last thing we're going to do, um, A is a non-vector matrix. So if we know that both of these are not 0, are not 1, then we know that we have a uh, non-vector matrix, and we go from there, right? So this should run and allow us to categorize the different values, uh, the different types of dimensions that we have in A. And we could check this, right? Let's run this thing. Uh, what are you upset about here? Oh, MATLAB got mad because I copy and pasted the wrong thing. I actually can't include the SF. Silly mistake. Yeah, so here we go. We actually just confirmed that this thing is a column vector. Let's go ahead and set this to the empty vector or the empty matrix, depending on what you want to say. Let's run it and see what happens. Okay. Uh, MATLAB actually tested if it was empty. It was empty. So indeed that condition checked out. Let's run a matrix or uh, even a vec uh, row vector. So let's say this is a one by 10 and it's the zeros. Uh, save. We produced a row vector. Let's go ahead and test a random uh, pseudo. Yeah, so here we go. Let's go four by three. We have a non-vector matrix, which is exactly what we expected. Um, yeah, so in this situation we have those um, short circuited and we could be a little bit interesting um, and say that we in this case instead of having two else ifs we could combine it into one and we could use the short circuited or so specifically we could say if one of those if the number of rows is equal to one and the number of columns is not equal to one or the number of rows is not equal to one and the number of columns is equal to one then we have a non-scalar vector. And that's another way to kind of test and go here. Uh, I've been using this word return because I've been thinking a lot about functions recently. Um, we'll talk more about that when we get into functions in terms of what it does. 
we could delete that and it will run equivalently. So here we've actually used both the short circuited and and the short circuited or. And in this case, we're testing if it's a scalar, a non-scalar vector, or a non-vector matrix, partitioning it accordingly. Um, here we go, let's make sure that this works. Let's do a four by one. And when we run that, we notice that we have a non-scalar vector, which is exactly what we expect. Again, this short circuited or, if the first one evaluates as true, then the entire statement evaluates as true without having to actually check this second condition. That's what we call logical short circuiting, and we're gonna use that in future videos as we start to work with function files. Thank you so much for your attention. I'll see you in the next video.